that the, the law did the, as far as not doing it that did not change the penalties between the two uh, are what are a little bit different so just something to be mindful of there some of the penalties are a little bit worse if you're constitutional carrying which i'm not surprised you know they're still trying to push you uh, to do the training and stuff What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today we're going to be discussing some of the new changes to South Carolina and how you carry a gun. Um, what did pass on March 7th was the constitutional carry and that's pretty much what we're going to be focusing on um, as far as kind of the major changes. Uh, I will have uh, links in the description as well as links on my website so you can go in and read this stuff as well. Uh, but as I always say, come in, get some formal training, learn the laws in depth. I'm not going very in depth on this stuff today. I want to touch on what's the big changes. All right, make sure everybody fully understands what they mean by a concealable weapon. And then we're going to have some other great videos coming out um, with talking about long guns and rifles and different things like that. But today, again, the focus is on just the constitutional carry. So let's get into this. Now, the major change that has happened, all right, or the, to me, I think the big change for this is now anybody 18 or older can carry a gun concealed or open on their person and they do not have to have a permit all right so let's let me back up real quick all right and i apologize we're, we're gonna we're gonna educate on the constitutional carry first so everybody fully understands this because the way they're talking about this is some of it is right and some of it is not technically wrong but this all goes back to the wording of everything and you'll kind of see when we start talking about these laws and stuff. The wording is very key to do your best to try to understand. All right, so South Carolina is now constitutional carry. All right, what constitutional carry means is essentially you can carry concealed or open without having a permit, all right? What we were before all of this was a permit issue state and an open carry with training state. So that means you had to have a permit before you could conceal carry or open carry. Now, most of your states out there are what's called open carry states. That means you have to openly carry the gun out in the open and where you, whether you live there or not. Now, there's two states, Idaho and Wyoming, or Wyoming and Montana, uh, those states, yes, are you do have to be a resident to be able to open carry in those states. But those are the only two states, all right? Or which one of the two, I apologize. I'll have, again, links where you can go and look. This, again, was mainly focusing on South Carolina. But all of the other open carry states, like North Carolina, is an open carry state. You don't have to be a resident. You don't have to have a permit. You can go there and open carry. But now if you want to conceal carry in some of these states, then that's where the permit comes into play. All right? And not every constitutional carry state is like what we've done and some of the other places have done where you don't have to be a resident and you can constitutional carry. So like Texas is one of those. All right, but now Georgia and Tennessee that are right here near us, you have to be a resident for the constitutional carry. So again, this is where the permit comes into play. You're still going to need the permit when you go out of state unless you're going to an open carry state where you can just openly carry your gun or you're going to a constitutional carry state that doesn't make you have to be a resident. So these are all things you need to look at and why I wanted to educate on this. So constitutional carry is the same thing as what people call permitless carry. You don't have to have a permit. 
Open carry means you have to openly carry the gun. It's got to be out in the open somewhere. All right, and we're talking about handguns right now. Again, I will have another video focusing on rifles and long guns so everybody can understand that. But again, as always, each state is going to be different. Then you can still have states where you have to be issued a permit. All right. So you've still got that stuff going on as well, too. But constitutional carry is the same as permitless carry. Open carry is open carry. It's totally different. But most constitutional carry states will add in open carry. And then you still have permit issue states. So now that we've got a good understanding of what constitutional carry is, open carry is, and permit issue is, now back to this yes 18 years or older all right and this is all from sled i'm not making any of this crap up all right some of this is i'm giving you what the law says 18 years or older you are now allowed to carry on your person concealed or open without a permit also with that age change it's now anyone 18 or older can now apply for a concealed weapons permit so again if you plan on traveling outside of south carolina it's best to go ahead and just get your permit the constitutional carry is only here in south carolina unless like we talked about earlier you go to another constitutional carry state where you don't have to be a resident 18 years or older carry on you all right, you can carry concealed open, get a permit. Now, the other thing that changed is now there's no restrictions or there's no um, designated spots where you can keep it in your vehicle. Wherever you want to keep it in your vehicle, you can keep it in your vehicle, loaded around in the chamber, ready to go. I would still recommend focusing on some of the old spots. Go back to my um, video where we're talking about uh, carrying in the vehicle all right I've got that updated and out there so go out there check that out I would still try to stay in those spots let's be responsible gun owners and do a good job of when we're going somewhere where we can't take our gun because yes there still are those places I've got that video out there as well too where you cannot carry your gun so again anyone in the state of south carolina whether you're a resident or not can constitutional carry 18 or older and can have it anywhere in your vehicle yes this applies to any resident or non-resident that is in the state of south carolina another one of those big changes so this applies to anyone resident or non-resident again if you're in the state of south carolina you can have a loaded gun on your person or anywhere in your vehicle now another change here and i'm i'm not a fan of it okay uh you handle it how you want to i'm just making a recommendation but now you don't have to let law enforcement know that you are carrying a weapon on your person or in your vehicle i'm not a fan of that because uh, look let, let's let's be honest law enforcement has a hard enough job as it is be kind be courteous be respectful just let them know that you have it in your vehicle or on your person if you're interacting with law enforcement again you do not have to i'm just asking to be courteous what you do is what you do all right some of the uh Penalties, if you decide the constitutional carry, are a little bit worse than someone with a permit. Uh, for example, going into a bar, you know, now this is all premised around the prosecutor for your area. This isn't saying someone with a permit, this is what you're only going to be charged with. I just want to kind of give that little disclaimer out there. It's going to depend on the prosecutor for the area that you're in. But now from what this says here, with a permit you get caught carrying and drinking uh, in a public place then you will be pulled your permit for five years if you're constitutional carry meaning you're not carrying with permit under the constitutional carry law uh, you could be fined up to two thousand dollars and spend up to two years in jail permit or no permit it's really going to depend on the prosecutor 
for that area that you're in. So just be smart. You shouldn't be carrying your gun and consuming alcohol anyway. Um, that that the, the law, did, the, as far as not doing it, that did not change. The penalties between the two uh, are what are a little bit different. So just something to be mindful of there. Some of the penalties are a little bit worse if you're constitutional carrying, which I'm not surprised. You know, they're still trying to push you uh, to do the training and stuff. The penalties if you're a felon and you get caught with a gun have been increased, which should have been in the first place. I don't know why uh, that was a big change, but those penalties uh, did get worse. I'm not going to sit here and go through all of them. Again, I'll have these links in. You can go in and read. I just want to talk about some of the big changes. A, another one was if you are uh, the owner of a firearm and within 10 days of discovering, and that's the way it says, within 10 days of discovering uh, your gun is lost or stolen, you've got to report it to your local uh, police station or sheriff's office. Uh, there is a, was there a fine with this one in addition, facts? No, there wasn't a fine with that, but again, it's all, it's all depend on the prosecutor and law enforcement for your area. But there is no actual listed fine uh, like there is for your permit. So that's another thing. Within 48 hours of you finding out your permit is lost or stolen, you need to file a police report, local police or sheriff's office. Um, that one is a uh, misdemeanor. If you are caught and hadn't reported it and a $25 fine. So those were uh, some, some of the other big changes that again those are the the to me kind of the bigger changes you can go through and read through the bill at some of the other stuff um now another change that was made i don't really see it as a big change like what i discussed earlier but now so the way this reads is uh, you have to get permission at a hospital, medical clinic, doctor's office, or any other facility where medical services or procedures are performed unless expressly authorized by the appropriate entity. So meaning you gotta get permission. So really kind of what changed there a little bit is before uh, you could only be an employee and get that permission. And it was a DHEC certified clinic. Um, when I read this last time, I don't think it was any any facility where a medical so that's the key here any facility where a medical service or procedure is performed but you got this is all in that wording you got to see what they're classifying as medical so what i'm talking about is they might classify your dentist office as a medical procedure or a medical service so the dentist stuff all right, now you got to think about plastic surgery and things like that. So remember, this is any other facility where medical services or procedures are performed. Be very careful on that. Make sure you're getting permission. Uh, now, the clinics, um, not clinics, but pharmacies, those aren't medical procedures. We could kind of say that's a medical service. They are uh, prescribing medication. Uh, that's something I'll have to kind of dig into and look how deep they're going to go into that. But that's why I wanted to go over some of this wording. Now, this, this one to, was implied with permits and stuff. Um, now they're pretty much saying it, it is, it's, it's a law now. Uh, if you're going to someone's house, they're wanting you to make sure you get permission from the person in that house or the, the owner of the house or property, okay? Uh, again, this was just implied. Be respectful. Ask when you're going somewhere. You know, now if it's family, friends, everybody knows everybody, but if you're going somewhere new, remember that it's right here in the, it's, it's in the bill. So this is something you're gonna have to start doing now or 
honestly, that person could call the cops uh, and you could run the chance of being fined, arrested, God only knows what, depending on the law enforcement and the prosecutor for your area. Uh, okay, there's that. The school stuff. So this is 18 or older in the vehicle. So now anybody 18 or older, you can have a gun in your vehicle on school property before you had to have a permit before you could be on school property with it in your vehicle. Uh, and But now this uh, did not, they did not change where you have it in your vehicle on school property. So. Anywhere outside of school property, you can have it in your vehicle anywhere you want. If you're on school property, all right? Attended or locked motor vehicle and is secured in a closed glove compartment, closed console, closed trunk, or in a closed container secured by an integral fastener and transported in the luggage compartment of the vehicle. Again, I'm not going in depth on that. You need to refer to the carrying in a vehicle video. We'll go in depth on that, but that is on school property. It's console, glove box, container under the seat, or a container in the luggage compartment. And now we discuss in depth what the luggage compartment is in that vehicle video. Uh, now you are good if you're driving through. So anybody 18 or older, if you're just driving through the school, so I'm up near Clemson University, there's major roads that go through that school that people travel on. So as long as you're just traveling down the road, you're not stopping anywhere, you can have it on your person in the vehicle, 18 or older. Uh, remains, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, yep, toward then, 48 hours, all right, misdemeanor upon conviction must be fined $25. So going back to the permit and when you report it. That was the 10 day stuff. I'm just going through and highlighted major things. Um, the church with the churches. So with the churches, this I don't remember seeing this in here. Um, before I could have missed it, uh, but now if your church uses a school, some part of the school, gymnasium, auditorium for their church service, you just have to get permission from the church. But the reason I'm pointing this out, the school district can ask for a list of people who the church has allowed to carry on the school property. So just be mindful of that. Just letting you know. All right. Now, here's the thing. Uh, they say it is a concealable weapon. They don't say a handgun, pistol, revolver, whatever. It's a concealable weapon as far as what you can conceal in your vehicle. Because people were, when this first came out, everybody was like, oh, the rifle this, shotgun that. Concealable weapon, their definition of concealable weapon, meaning having a length of less than 12 inches measured along its greatest dimensions. Um, I did, so that's in 23.31.10, section 5. Concealable weapon means a firearm having a length of less than 12 inches along its greatest dimensions that may be carried on openly on one's person or in a manner that is hidden from public view in normal wear of clothing except when needed for self-defense, defense of others, and the protection of, protection of real or personal property. That is the exact law, what it says. So I'm just telling you what it says, folks. What you do is what you do, all right? It's on you to stand in front of the judge and or jury, depending on your case. I'm just telling you, it's a legal system, not a justice system. This is what the legal system says. It's a legal system, not a constitutional carry system. This is what the legal system says. I'm sorry. That's the way that it is. That's the world that we're living in. Um, all y'all want to try to get pissy and freaking sit there and finger bang away, you freaking keyboard warriors. I'm just telling you what the law says. What you do is what you do. Um, 
yes, SLED is supposed to offer a free training class twice a month now. Uh, they've already sent out a notification to all of the instructors pretty much saying they're waiting for the budget to be approved. Could be four to six months before they start offering this. So I've got a version where we go over just the concealed carry if that's all you or the constitutional carry if that's all you want to do you don't travel outside of South Carolina. I've got a class for that um, and I might beat sled to the punch. I might start offering maybe one free class a month on the constitutional carry. Not the permit class, uh, the constitutional carry. Uh, so we'll see what comes, um, and we'll we'll go from there. But please learn the laws, folks. I cannot stress that enough. Mm. So yes, here's where you were. So some of y'all probably be like, resident, oh, blah blah blah. So to carry a concealed weapon to a resident or non qualified non-resident who is at least 18 years of age and who is not prohibited by state law from possessing the weapon upon submission of blah 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 blah. So that's also for the permit as well too. Um, there is, you, as a non, you can get a non-resident permit for the state of South Carolina. If you are curious about that, you do have to own property. Uh, it doesn't have to be, uh, have a like what they say livable dwelling. Like I know with some home loans and things like that, they want a livable dwelling on the property. You just have to own property. There's paperwork you got to get this tax assessor to fill out. I can go over all that and have that for you if you decide to come in and take the permit class with us. Um, last thing I want to touch on uh, with motorcycles, uh, what it says, motorcycle while secured in a closed saddlebag or other similar closed accessory container, whether permanently or temporarily attached. Um, we'll go in depth on that. Again, it's in my vehicle video. I've just given you just some of the major changes so everybody can kind of understand. Please come in, take a class. We will be discussing this in depth. We'll be going over scenarios just to help everybody fully understand what you can and you can't do. All right, there are some things that you cannot do here in the state of South Carolina. It is a legal system, not a justice system. So finger bang away all you want with you freaking keyboard warriors. Um, I'm just telling you what the law says. This is all from SLED, the actual bill, SLED stuff. This is all linked in in the description, my website. Go in and understand it. If you have questions, I'm always available. Okay. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.